Hi, this is Becky with Icing on Top Becky's Cakes, and today we're going to make a sculpted sloth cake. And the best thing about this is it's very minimal sculpting because we're going to start with the Wilton's Cuddly Bear Cake Pan. This is a 3D cake pan that I use for so many things. I've definitely done this little cute bear several times. And um, I'm also going to use like an extra, you can use an extra cupcake. I actually had an egg shaped cake pan and I was going to use that for the arms, but we'll, you could also use a cupcake, which would be just as easier. I just overcompensated and did extra cake more than I needed, just in case. But after doing it, you really only need a cupcake. So we're gonna cut his ears off in order to make him into a sloth. I'm able to use this cake pan to make a 3D unicorn, and but just by carving that, and you can make, it's endless. So I've used this guy for a lot of things just cause he makes a good starting point for so many different little animals. Now after I trim off the ears, I'm just gonna make sure that I have the head be perfectly rounded. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim anything else out of the way that doesn't uh, make it rounded. Now whenever you are carving any cake, it is just so much easier if the cake has been completely chilled in the refrigerator because it really cuts down on the crumbs and on it falling apart, so definitely do that. I'm also gonna round off his face too because I have a different look that I'm doing for my sloth than what I would have done for a cuddly bear. I'm also getting rid of the arms too because um, the position of the arms, I kind of wanted the arms sitting on the sloth's legs and I wanted it to be so you could see the, the claws really clearly. But if you wanted to leave the arms like this, you can also still make the sloth. But I'm going to trim right into there, which is cutting in to make the face a little rounder. So I'm going to cut in and then around. Arms, um, like I said, I used a little egg shaped pan that was also by Wilton, but you can totally just use a cupcake and um, just make sure that's chilled also because that makes it a little easier to place. And I'm going to measure where I want it and then I'm going to cut an angle right towards the uh, teddy bear so that um, that'll fit right in that groove. So I'm going to have to cut this at an angle. First I'm going to get it the right size and then right there I'm just going to cut that place off so that it fits more snug right against the teddy bear. And then I'm gonna kind of clean up all these crumbs after I do the other side. And then um, I notice that there's part of the face I wanna get a little more rounded because my sloth is gonna have a nice round face and I'm gonna do a lot of piping there. So we want that to be nice and smooth for me to be able to pipe on. And then I'm gonna use my piping bag and just put a frosting all over the bear and then after I get um, each of the little hands glued in place with frosting, I'm just gonna completely cover the bear with frosting and then I can smooth it out. And next I'm gonna take my offset spatula and just press it all in and evenly distribute the frosting. And then after that, I'm gonna use a more flexible um, scraper like these hard plastic ones because you can bend them to get in the different grooves and stuff and so I'm just going to scrape that over so that it all is nice and smooth. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because this entire sloth is going to have piping right over it but I like to get all the details of the split sloth as much as possible this way and that way I can still see more where the face outline is and the arms are outlined and the legs and so I want to make sure I get those details in there so that when I'm piping I keep those details nice. Now I want to mark off where I want to place the face and so I had something nice and round like this um, uh, round uh, metal ring that you can use for cooking mousse and stuff like that but uh, I'm just going to use it as my marker today to see exactly where I want the round part of the face to be. And that way I don't have to guess, do so much guesswork when I am piping. 
and I'm going to use a very large writing tip and slightly tan buttercream. This is just an off-white and that's going to be the color of the face. So I'm going to pipe it on first and I'm going to again use my bendable um, scraper to smooth it in place because the bendable scraper will help me um, get the round curvature of the face a lot better than a metal offset spatula would. You can see that I used my uh, mousse ring again to kind of roughly mark off where I wanted to put uh, some other markings for the sloth. And then again with a large piping tip, I am going to pipe on um, a dark, dark tan. And I think I used burnt orange and mixed that with a little bit of brown. And so I came up with this color and it just seemed like the color that I see on sloths. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna pipe it right where we want our buttercream. Now I want it more um, in a triangle shape, but this circle kinda helped me have a rough estimate where I wanted this area to be. And then after that part's done, we're gonna use a toothpick and we're gonna mark off where we want the nose and mouth. And then we're gonna go ahead and pipe that on with black. I'm gonna use a small writing tip for that. And then for the sloth's hair, we're using a 32 large open star tip. I'm gonna start at the bottom and we're just gonna pipe. Now, depending on the direction that I want the hair to go, I'm switching directions. So I did the first piping around the bottom and then I did the leg. And with the leg, I started the top part of the foot and um, how I do the hair is instead of doing short little starbursts like you would do if you're just piping stars, we are doing long. So you're gonna just use more pressure and pull it to make longer lengths of hair. So it looks like a very fluffy sloth when we are done here. And then, so I'm gonna pull up from the bottom of the foot here and I'm gonna bring it up to meet the middle. Continue bringing the hair that it, we're just going to pipe it so that it uh, overlaps right over the last side that we did. So we're just going to continue piping so that it overlaps over the last row that we did. And for the front, for the belly area, we're just going to pipe the next row right above the row that we did below that and kind of try to place them so that they're in between each one that we've already done. Now for the sloth's hands and arms, we're again gonna switch direction and we're gonna start piping um, in the direction that we want the arm to go so that you can define the arm better when the hair is all going in the same direction as the arm. So we're gonna start at the tip and then we're just gonna overlap it just like we did on the belly, just going in this direction instead. I'm gonna finish piping up the, to the top of the head here. And then before we actually start the top, I want to finish his back first. And um, I'm just going to turn this around. And the back, we're just going to pipe rows all the way up, just like we did the belly. So the back is pretty easy. It's just repetitive. And we just make nice, long piping areas, just so that it, he looks really fluffy. So just squeeze and make it long for each of hair that we're doing back here. <laughs> and then we just go all the way up. So lots of chocolate there. If you're a chocolate lover, this cake 
is fantastic because it has got lots of chocolate frosting. Okay, now for the face, we do it just a little different. We're gonna pipe around the outside of this face and then bring it in. And that way we're framing the face. Right at the top, I wanna add a little bit of longer pieces coming to coming down over so that the sloth has a little bit of a hairdo going on here. Okay, and then next we're gonna have a little fun part. We need this large smoothie straw to help support our party hat. First, I'm gonna put that smoothie straw right on into the sloth at an angle. So I kind of marked off where I wanted the hat to sit, so that'll help me know right where to place it once I already have the frosting and the sprinkles on it. We're just gonna push that all the way through until I actually feel the board. And then I'm gonna snip off any extra. I'm gonna measure it, see how much extra I'm gonna have to snip off. And I'm just gonna snip off the top. And then that way I know that the cone will fit when I <laughs> have it all ready, because yes, you don't wanna to have to do that once your cone's already decorated. Okay, so over here, I have a bunch of these rainbow sprinkles here. And I put them on a plate and um, it's all ready to go for me. Once I smooth some frosting over my cone, I can just roll it right in the sprinkles. And it's really super easy. You just have to make sure that you smooth the frosting on real good here. As you saw, I used um, the piping tip just to pipe it on, because I'm gonna be using that large piping tip anyway for the cheeks and stuff later. And so I'm just gonna smooth this frosting right on using my flexible scraper again. We've scraped it all smooth. We're just gonna roll this straight in the sprinkles and the sprinkles will all stick. And so we wanna make sure we do this right after we have applied the buttercream, especially if you have a crusting buttercream like I have. And if you want my recipe, I have the vanilla buttercream um, tutorial on my channel. So please check that out if you wanna know what kind of frosting I use for this cake. And to make it uh, <clears throat> chocolate instead of vanilla for the rest of it, I just add half a cup of cocoa powder instead of, and I use half a cup less of the powder sugar that it calls for. And um, that's really how I do it because I love my vanilla buttercream, so I use the exact same recipe for my chocolate, only I add the cocoa powder instead. So now that we've fully rolled this in, we kind of pat it down so that all the sprinkles are attached to the cone. Right up where our straw was and I'm gonna pipe right at the top. I'm using a 1M tip with my pink and I'm just gonna pipe right up at the top for the top of the party hat. And then we're just gonna pipe all the way around, just one easy line. And that's also with the 1M tip and that will complete our party hat. Then we're just gonna add a flower later to add a little more festivity to our hat. I'm gonna pipe on the sloth's cheeks using, again, a large writing tip. I'm just gonna pipe that in place, and then we're gonna pipe on the other side as well. And then for the claws, I'm just gonna use white buttercream, and I just cut a little hole in my piping bag, and we're just gonna pipe the claws right from there. Using a 124 Teco tip, I'm going to pipe a little flower. I'm just going to make petals around the top. And if you've seen any of my flower videos, just kind of follow the same motion. The narrow end goes out, and then we pipe a petal. I'm giving myself a little pad there first before I pipe the first petal. And then it's kind of an up-down motion for each petal, and you kind of uh, pivot your wrist as you do each petal. It kind of like a triangle, um, keeping the narrow end of the tip on the outside, but the narrow end of the triangle on the, in on the inside as you pivot your wrist. Just adding some tiny little yellow sprinkles right to the center of the flower. The sloth is done and ready to party. I gave her a little cupcake that I spilled with the 1M tip and some sprinkles, and I have lots of videos about how to swirl a cupcake and decorate a cupcake if you want to know how to do the cupcake as well. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.